Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my favorite skincare products of 2023. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. So these are in no particular order. However, I'm gonna start with the one that I'm just kind of obsessed over right now, and it's the most recent. And if this does not speak volumes to you, I don't know what will. These are my empties. I actually have a full one in my refrigerator and then a full one in my bathroom. Now, I did wanna say that if you get it, you have to make sure it is by Coast RX. Y'all, I would not even order it off walmart.com. I will provide a link because I order it from Amazon and I've always gotten the bottle that says Coast RX. So many people have ordered it from, from walmart.com and in the description it says Coast RX, but when they receive it, it does not say Coast RX right there. It, the bottle looks the exact same, everything else, but it's made by a different brand. This is the one that I trust. But y'all, and I hate to use this word, but I am obsessed with it. I use it day and night. It is it is a game changer. You will see such a difference in your skin. One thing that I really like about it is that it naturally includes so many skin care ingredients. It includes allantoin, which is supposed to be calming to your skin. It includes glycolic acid. Um, it includes proteins, collagen, and elastin. It includes antioxidants. It includes peptides. And those are just found naturally in snail mucin. Now, I did want to clear up something because there are some people, there's a handful of people that are like, I would never put, you know, snail mucin on my skin. Now, I think that a lot of people think that it is snail excretion, but it's not, it's snail secretion and there is a difference. Excretion is like snail waste. I would not put snail waste on my face, but it's actually secretion. So snails produce it in order to moisturize and protect their little fragile bodies when they're you know, moving around. But the way that it was discovered is that snail farmers actually started to notice that whenever they would handle the snails, that the palms of their hands would become very smooth and that if they had any wounds on their hands, they would heal really quickly. And that's why they started to do research on snail mucin to see if it was actually good for our skin, and it is. But I wanted to mention that I have a friend who I met here on YouTube. Her name is Marty. Hi, Marty. She told me that her son has Polaris ketosis, which is little teeny tiny bumps on the skin, and it's kind of hard to address. My children have it also. She didn't know that my children had it, but she told me that she bought this snail mucin and that her son was putting it on his arms and it cleared up his Polaris ketosis. A lot of people call it chicken skin. And so when she told me that, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get my kids to put it on their arms because they have those little tiny bumps on their arms also. My daughter started doing it and within two weeks, I would say it's about 75% smoother. My son's only been putting it on his arms for about one week now, and I would say for sure it's about 50% smoother. Now, my son's is quite a bit worse than my daughter's. Um, my daughter cares a little bit more. My son doesn't really care at all, but I was just like, let, you know, let's give it a shot. It is literally smoothing out the skin. We have tried everything. I have bought every product out there that's supposed to be for like rough and bumpy skin, and nothing has helped until this. So yeah, that is favorite skincare product number one. Next up is my gold bond. And I have several empties right here. The only reason I have all these empties is because I was originally going to do an empties video. And then I thought, these are all my favorites. So this, you guys have probably seen it so many times on my channel. It is my favorite body lotion ever. It's my daughter's favorite body lotion ever. I feel like it's the only product that actually just really locks in all the moisture. And the reason it does lock in all the moisture is because it has so many occlusive ingredients in it. It's got petrolatum, it's got jojoba oil, it's got dimethicone, which is like a silicone, and it's got shea butter. So all those things are just gonna really trap the moisture in and prevent any epidermal water loss. And as we age, that is so important for our skin. It's important when we're young. I love that this is also my daughter's favorite. Um, I'm so happy that she's really into skincare because she's only 17 years old. When I was 17, I was not using any skincare. I was not putting lotion on my body when I got out of the shower. I was not putting any type of, you know, um, moisturizers on my face or anything like that. It just, um, it wasn't important to me. Nobody was stressing the importance of it, but 
I'm her mom, so obviously I'm always stressing the importance of taking care of your skin. So I feel like she's just gonna have such great skin when she grows up. This is her absolute favorite. If I ever try to change it, which I do sometimes, she gets so upset. I did wanna show you because I just happen to have them here too. I do have this CeraVe that's an empty, and then actually it's not empty, but I kept choosing this over this that it kind of went rancid. And so I obviously wasn't gonna put it on my body, but I choose that over this. I choose it over, this is also Gold Bond. It's just a different, it says pure moisture. This one is way more moisturizing and occlusive than that one. And so we just won't use anything else anymore. So I'm really just done, you know, trying out new body lotions. This is just the one for us. Y'all, it's also so great as your last step in your skincare, nighttime skincare routine. I smother my neck with it every single night because you don't want your neck skin or even, you know, your facial skin. You don't want your skin to dry out as you sleep. And especially if you sleep under like a ceiling fan or something like that, you don't want, you don't want moisture being pulled out of your skin. So you want to put something pretty heavy on top that's just going to lock it all in so that you can stay younger looking longer. And I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to stay younger looking. It's so funny. Every time I hear somebody start out a video, I'm not trying to look 20. I just wanna have, I'm like, why? Why is everybody so afraid to say like, I'm not trying to look 20. I would love to look 20. If I could snap my fingers and be like, can I have my 20 year old skin back? I would do it in a heartbeat. But I think it's so funny because I feel like so many women are afraid to admit that we liked the way we looked a little bit better when we were younger. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Okay, so next up is castor oil. If you have been with my channel for a while, and some of you have been here since the beginning, you know who you are, I know who you are. I recognize your name, I recognize your comments. Um, I could probably just read your comment and know who it's from because I even recognize the way you write and you know, anyway, it's so cute and I, and I really appreciate it. So I feel it's so heartwarming and it's so touching and so thank you. But in the first couple of years, I wanna say of my channel, I was I would always create this DIY and I shared it with you on my channel. I still create that DIY to this day. It is in my refrigerator. I've got two pump spray bottles full and the two main ingredients are aloe vera juice or aloe vera gel either one sometimes i just you know whichever one i decide to pick up and then castor oil those are the two main ingredients everything else is just other little oils that i might pick up rose hip seed oil hyaluronic acid um i'll just you know i'll just kind of experiment with different oils to see what i like but the main two that are always in it are aloe vera and then castor oil um y'all Castor oil has so many benefits to your skin, to your body. There has been this craze on TikTok about castor oil. People are saying that if you rub it on your belly or rub it in your belly button at night, that it's gonna help, that it can help with digestion or constipation. Um, some people are saying it can help with, um, I think it's called PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome or something like that. There's another woman named Barbara O'Neill. I don't know if you know who she is. She claims that it can help with cysts, that it can help with cancer, that it can help with kidney stones, it can help with bone spurs, you know, especially if you put like castor oil packs and you know, I don't know how long you're supposed to do it or anything like that. But there was such a craze over castor oil like in the last month or so on TikTok. And when you read the comments in the comment section, People are just saying how it's helped them with pretty much everything. But one thing that I have personally, you know, used it for for a very long time is skincare. So I like to make my little DIYs and I kind of use it as a serum, you know, and I rotate things around all the time, but those always stay in my refrigerator. They even go with me out of town. But one thing that I also do with my castor oil is I add it to my gold bond. So I put a generous amount of gold bond in my hand and then I pour a generous amount of this. I would not say it's half and half. I definitely use less castor oil than I do lotion, but I just, you know, put together a consistency that I enjoy, put it all over my body. I'm telling you, y'all, if you want smooth, skin from the neck down. You can even put it on your face because I do put it on my face also. At night, I actually mix it with my snail mucin and it really makes it spread really easily because the snail mucin is very slippery and it's just perfect. I mean, I feel like right now I've got such a good skincare routine 
going on. My skin on my face, it's, I feel like my skin everywhere is just better than it's been in a very long time. And I think one of the reasons is because I'm really concentrating so much on keeping the moisture in. And I think that's very, very important as we age. So anyway, um, some people are saying that it helps even with cellulite, like you can rub it on your cellulite, rub it in your belly button, rub it on your thyroid. I mean, you would, you would be amazed at all the ways that people are using it and all the claims that people are making as far as it healing them. And it's kind of funny because there's not a lot of scientific evidence to support the things that I'm reading online. However, I don't rely on scientific evidence for everything because there's reasons why certain natural remedies get passed down, you know, decade after decade after decade. Some of the things that we use now have just been used for centuries and most of the evidence to support you know, its efficacy is just anecdotal. Um, I don't think science, I don't think scientists are, are gonna wanna spend the money, you know, to do scientific research on something that's so inexpensive to obtain, you know? So I don't always rely on scientific evidence. I rely on the way that my skin and my body responds to certain things, and that's how I make a decision on, you know, whether or not I'm going to keep it in my rotation and stuff like that. So I feel like this one should go next just because I just talked about my little DIY. This is the brand that I use whenever I'm making my little DIYs. It's made by Lily of the Desert. Sometimes I'll use the juice. Sometimes I'll use the gel. It just depends on what I'm feeling at the moment. The gel is just a little bit thicker, um, but once you get it into your little bottle, you know, and shake it up, it kind of like thins out just a little bit. But anyway, I am just loving, I love DIYs. And aloe vera is so good for so many things, just like castor oil. For me, I 100% think that it helps with skin discoloration. When I get away, when I stop using my little DIY, because sometimes, like I said, I just, I go in waves of things. Sometimes I just get really obsessed with products and then I leave others alone and then I'll return to them just like everybody else, I'm sure. Whenever I stop using this, I feel like the dark spots on my skin start to look darker. But when I use this, right away, I feel like they get more pink and then they start to fade. I swear that this helps keep my dark spots lighter, 100%. I know for sure. Anyway, um, and I just love, I love using natural ingredients. One thing I can say for sure is that whenever I'm in the kitchen and if I burn myself, which I do for some reason pretty often because I'm a little bit clumsy, the first thing I do is grab my DIY with my aloe vera juice in it and my castor oil and I just douse it with it. Whenever I was young, if I got a scrape or if I got burned or something like that, that's the first thing that my dad would do. He would go in the backyard, he'd cut open an aloe vera plant and then rub it on. He's put it on my sunburns before. Next up is hyaluronic acid. This is something that I also add to my DIYs. I will add it sometimes just to my face moisturizer. I'll add it to my body moisturizer. You can add it to pretty much anything, but you also wanna make sure that whatever you're gonna put on top of it or whatever you're gonna add it to has a lot of like emollients and moisturizing ingredients. I'm very careful in the winter months because what a humectant does is, like I said, it draws water to itself. And so when you put it on the skin, it draws water to itself to keep your skin moist. However, if there is no moisture in the air, for the hyaluronic acid to draw from, it will draw it out of your skin. It doesn't care where it comes from, it just draws it to itself. So if you're gonna use hyaluronic acid, you definitely want to either add it to a little bit of water in your hand, or you wanna to top it with some moisturizer or add it to a moisturizer that has a lot of emollients or a lot of you know hydrating, moisturizing ingredients. But one thing that I have been using this most recently for, because I follow a lot of dermatologists, doctors, plastic surgeons on social media. Anyway, this dermatologist said, if you want plump lips, what you should do every night is put smear hyaluronic acid on your lips, all over your lips, and then top it with like Vaseline or Aquaphor 
or something like that. So that is what I have been doing. And I didn't really start to notice anything like the first week that I was using it. But then after that, I started to notice that my lips weren't as chapped. <laughs> you know, I, I've always suffered from chapped lips and I will coat so much Vaseline or Aquaphor. I keep Vaseline by my bedside. I keep Aquaphor in my drawer in this bathroom over here and I smear it on my mouth all the time. However, sometimes I might wake up in the middle of the night and my lips are a little bit, they feel a little bit dry. Also, I think I sleep with my mouth open, it's so gross. But whenever I use this, if I put this on first and then I put the Vaseline over it, I don't ever have to reapply throughout the night. That's one plus to it, but I, I'm still waiting for like some huge lips or something like that. But I think more than anything, it's probably just going to help kind of um, plump out the fine lines around my mouth. I feel like I've noticed that, but I don't wanna jump the gun and say that. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick with it because it seems promising and because I know, you know, things about hyaluronic acid and occlusive agents, it, it makes total sense to me. So I'm gonna keep doing it. Next up is my 5% salicylic acid. And I salicylic acid is so great if you ever have like big pores or if you get hormonal pimples, you know, from time to time. I've never had issues with acne ever. So much so that when I was in high school, if I got a pimple, I would stay home from school. I remember one time I had to go to school because I had a test. And then right after that test, I went to the nurse's office and I was like, I gotta go home. And it's because I had a, a big pimple. I know that sounds terrible, <laughs> but it is what it is. It's true, that's what happened. But anyway, so whenever I do have a pimple, like the other day I got one and I think it's because I switched up away too many products. So I had gotten one that was so big. Anyway, this stuff works great, especially like sometimes if my pores on my nose you know, I always notice that that's the only place where I really notice my pores, not to say that I don't have them anywhere else because I do. That's the only place that I kind of notice them sometimes. Whenever I see them and I feel like, I don't know, they're getting big or something, I will start using salicylic acid. Um, one of the reasons that salicylic acid is so good for acne and for, you know, cleaning up pores is because it's oil soluble. So, um, it's, it's the difference between AHAs and BHAs. This is a BHA, so it's oil soluble. So it gets deep down in those pores, cleans them out. So anytime, if you're somebody, now I don't know if this is gonna help somebody who has like extreme acne, um, but it can't hurt to try it. But if you just get like little hormo hor hormonal breakouts, or if you just want to clean out your pores from time to time, because maybe your, your pores are starting to look big or something like that, once you clean them out, it's like they're able to close. So um, so you definitely want to keep that in your rotation. And this is a really good one. So yeah. Next up is the CeraVe Renewing uh, Salicylic Acid Cleaner. And it looks like this because I keep these in my shower. And um, this has been a favorite face wash of mine for years and years and years. If you've ever caught one of my skincare routines, then you've definitely seen it. Um, now, I feel like this, I know it includes a salicylic acid, but I feel like it's very gentle. It's effective, but gentle. It gets deep down in the pores and cleans them out, but it's not like stripping my skin. I don't feel like it's harsh on my skin. I use a lot of heavy hitters. I use glycolic acid, Retin-A, and I use high concentrations and salicylic acid. So, um, but my skin, and my skin is very tough, I think. So I don't know, like if you have sensitive skin, you might not enjoy some of the products that I'm showing you because they are pretty aggressive when it comes to, the, to you know, your skin. Um, you know, I've been using a 0.1% Retin-A over 20 years and that can be really aggressive. I think that my skin is just so used to these things now that nothing phases my skin. But anyway, so this is one of my favorite face washes. Like I said, I think it's effective, but it's still gentle. And I like that it has salicylic acid in it to help just kind of like get those dead skin cells off the surface and clean out my pores. Okay, next up is this 10% um, glycolic acid serum. If you've ever watched one of my AM skincare routines, then you've seen that I use glycolic acid all the time. Sometimes I switch out the brand. This is the one that I've been using most often. I was using one by Revolution Skincare, but I always had to go to their website to order. And I like to just order off Amazon if I can. So anyway, this is a 10%. I love it. I put it on like this morning. I put it on and then I put my snail mucin on 
and then I topped it with a moisturizer and that's what I have under my skin. And I just love it. I feel like this kind of breaks those little bonds that's keeping the dead skin cells attached to the surface of the skin. It just kind of preps your skin for whatever you're gonna put on it next so that you get deeper penetration. And so I am just a firm believer in using glycolic acid. Anyway, this is one of my favorites. You can use it every single day because it's that gentle. Unless you're not used to using glycolic acids, then you might want to start with something that's less of a concentration, but this one is just perfect for me. So it's always, I always keep a 10% glycolic acid serum in my rotation. Okay, now this one is, like I said, a heavy hitter. This is a 50%, 50% glycolic acid treatment. And it says that it's a gel peel. It's so funny when they use the word peel because I think that when people use this, they're expecting to see like an actual peel a few days later. That is never how it's worked for me. And this is a 50%. Do not ever, ever start with a 50%. I wouldn't even start with a 30%. I think I would start with like maybe, I would start with a 10%, go up to 15, 20, you know, just keep going up just to see what your skin can tolerate. But whenever I use this, and like I said, I use this most often in the summer because in the summer I kind of lay off my Retin-A because I know I'm gonna be out in the sun all the time. And, um, but then after a while, I feel like I can see the dead skin cells start to pile up on the surface of my skin because my skin starts to look really dull and lifeless and, and it's not light reflecting or anything like that. And so I'll do a treatment. And y'all, it's the difference between 30 seconds 30 seconds or a minute. If you leave this on 30 seconds or a minute too long, you could end up with, one time I put it on my chest and I'm like, my chest is tough as nails. I'm gonna leave it on like a minute longer. And sure enough, after I, um, what do you call it, neutralized it, I had the next day little tiny scabs all over my chest. I was like, whoops. So it is very, very effective, but it can be dangerous, you know, if you leave it on too long. It can be extremely effective and leave you with beautiful looking skin if you use it properly, but you have to keep testing it out to see how long, you know, you could leave it on. There are instructions on how long to leave it on. And I think usually I leave it on about three minutes total, but I leave it on certain parts of my face for different durations because I know my forehead can handle certain things. I know my chest can, and I know my chin can. Now the other areas of my face, like right in here and especially my neck, I have to be really careful and I, I can only, you know, leave it on there for a much shorter period of time. But I do want to explain because it does say that it's a gel peel. And like I said, people think that, that it's going to, their skin's going to peel off, but it's very rare that I ever peel after doing one of these treatments. It's not like a peel. I might experience some flaking a few days later, but I really think that it just kind of, and I've said it before, it, it's almost like it eats the dead skin right off the surface of your face. I know that glycolic acid goes in and kind of dissolves those bonds that are keeping the dead skin cells attached to the newer plump skin cells beneath. Um, and I feel like it just almost dissolves those dead skin cells because like I said, I never get a peel. I get, I might get some flaking a few days later, but your skin is like new. It's almost like if you rub your forehead, it might squeak. It's so shiny. Your lines on your forehead is where I notice it the most on me. They look so shallow, almost like they're not even there. But after a few days, you know, your skin cell turnover is so slow as you age, those skin cells start to pile up on the surface again. That's why you have to be very consistent with things like Retin-A, glycolic acids, you know, work something into your skincare that you're gonna use daily because as we age, those processes slow down. So it's our job to, you know, include products in our rotation that kind of keep those processes um, happening as fast as they should, you know? And honestly, I usually reach for something like this when I know that I've been inconsistent with my other products that are supposed to help kind of exfoliate the skin. And so I'm like, I need, you know, I need something to catapult me to the, to the next level just to get me back to where I need to be so that I can start being, you know, more consistent. So next up is this product right here. It's made by e.l.f. And it's, uh, it says pure skin moisturizer with oat milk, ceramides, and niacinamides. Now I've shown this to you several times and I've got, you know, several empties here. I love this stuff so much. Some of you don't love it as much because you said 
it's it kind of sits on the surface of the skin it it does a little bit like you definitely have to manipulate it into the skin so that's what i have under my makeup right now i actually um, use my 10% glycolic acid this morning. Then I put the snail mucin on top and then I put this on top of the snail mucin. And it does kind of have like a really kind of milky looking consistency. And you do have to kind of pat it into your skin and manipulate it into your skin. But I love it. I have it under my makeup. I think it wears so beautifully under makeup. But the reason that I love this product so much is because not only does it include niacinamides and ceramides. It also includes cholesterol and fatty acids. And if you're really big into skincare like I am, then you know that the stratum corneum, which is the top um, layer of the epidermis, it's what you see, you know, when you look at somebody's skin, the stratum corneum actually protects your skin and keeps water and moisture from escaping. So it's responsible for keeping your skin really moisturized and, and really healthy looking. But there are three major lipids in the stratum corneum, and those are fatty acids, cholesterol, and ceramides. And this contains all three. So whenever you find a product that has all three, when it has fatty acids, cholesterol, and ceramides, those are gonna work synergetically together to help support your skin's protective barrier. It's gonna help keep that moisture balance in your skin, and it's gonna help retain that lipid composition that's very important for healthy looking and feeling skin. So you're gonna look younger, longer, if you find products with all three. So it doesn't bother me that I have to pat this into my skin. It has everything that I want. It wears beautifully under makeup. It locks all the moisture in, and it strengthens, you know, my skin's protective barrier. So I'm definitely gonna keep this in my rotation. So last but not least, now this is not really skincare, but it is something that I use on my skin very regularly. It is the Jergens Instant Sun in the Deep Bronze. Um, I have it on right now. I just put it on this morning. Look how quickly, it's like instant, you know, um, and I'm not, not totally instant. I would say within like 10 minutes or five minutes, you can already see, you know, the color that you're going to get in the end. I always, always sleep in it. And um, whenever I don't, if I put it on in the morning and I wash it off by that evening, I don't feel like it develops as deep as it does if I sleep in it. So I always sleep in it. The way that I do it is that um, I used to have a day bed and it was a twin size. We don't have it anymore. And so um, I just use the sheets that I used to cover the day bed with. I wrap myself up like a little taquito and that's how I sleep in my bed so that I don't have to worry about it transferring to my sheets and I don't have to worry about like washing my sheets the next day because that's what I used to do and it was just, you know, such a chore. And so anyway, um, now I just wrap myself up like that and those, it just washes right out of your sheets anyway, but it develops long, it develops better. But y'all, anytime I'm feeling like unattractive, <laughs> or if I'm feeling like my body's out of shape or something like that, if I put on self-tanner, it's like an immediate confident boost. <laughs> like I just feel more attractive. I feel like my body looks better. I feel like my body looks more toned. I can't see like, you know, broken capillaries and stuff as easily. The only thing I don't like about it, and I've never found a tanning, a self-tanner that doesn't do this, um, it always darkens my dark spots, which is why I can never put it on my face. So I only put it from here down, but it definitely darkens like any age spots or moles or whatever um, on my body. And so I don't like that, but it's kind of funny because I have the opposite of what a lot of people have. Like a lot of people will get dark spots. I get white spots. Like my arms just have a bunch of little white spots that have no pigment in them whatsoever. And supposedly there's nothing that can be done about that. Actually, my dermatologist did give me something, but it was just a little sample size to rub on them every day. And I just didn't stick with it. So I don't know if, you know, my pigment would have come back or not, but, um, but it's kind of funny. And I've told this story before my little niece, her name is Callie. She's the sweetest thing in the world. And one time I was like, trying to just really encourage them to always use sunscreen on their body if they're gonna be out in the sun for you know long periods of time. And I was like, cause do you want your skin to look like this? And I was like, do you want like all these little white dots? Like there's no pigment in there. But if you protect your skin, you might not have to deal with that whenever you get older. And she was like, oh, why don't you like that? 
And I was like, why don't I like these little white spots? But I look at it that way because I know that it's from sun damage and I know that I've done damage to myself and that's why they're there but she doesn't see it that way. And as a matter of fact, she was like, I think they're pretty. I think it reminds me of a deer. <laughs> and I thought, I just thought that that was the cutest, most innocent thing that a kid has ever said about something that we might think is unattractive. You know, she was like, I think they're pretty. <laughs> and I just thought, I, maybe I'll start looking at it like that. Like, look at my pretty little white spots on my arms, you know? Anyway, all of that was just to say that whenever I use this selfless tanner, it fills in those little white spots and they actually look tan. If I go out in the sun, that does not happen. When I go out in the actual sun, my skin gets darker and those get whiter or they just become more noticeable. But when I use a self tanner, it really camouflages them. So um, I like that too. And you know what? I was not gonna show you this one because I feel like some of you are just gonna get upset about it. But this is, it's actually a body moisturizer, but I do not use it as a body moisturizer. So it takes me forever to go through. However, I do have another empty right here and I do have a new bottle of it, but this is made by EOS and it is the vanilla cashmere. And y'all, the smell of this is so, it's, it makes you smell edible. I don't know if that's weird or not, but um, it smells like, it kind of smells like a mix between a cake mix, cake batter, like a vanilla cake batter, and then like cotton candy. It is the best, one of the best smells that I've ever smelt. And so every night I put it on my wrist and sometimes I'll put it on my whole like inner arm there because I don't know, I'm not too worried about the skin there and it's not damaging it at all. But the only reason that I say that you guys are gonna crucify me is because it definitely has fragrance in it like a strong fragrance, but it smells so good. I just keep buying it because I like to put it, like I said, on my wrist and in my inner arm, and then I'll just rub it all over my clothes that I'm sleeping in at night because I just love the smell so much. And so anyway, I, I'm not going to encourage you to get it unless you just, if you're in the store next time, just, you know, smell it. Oh my gosh, you will die y'all. It is, it smells so good. So that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for being here. I always appreciate your time. Um, as usual, I'm gonna have links to everything that I showed you in this video. I'll have those links in my description box below this video. And then I'm also going to pin them to the top of the comment section so that they're a little bit easier for you guys to find. And so yeah, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and hopefully I will see you back here next week.